Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month we're going to move a library that's on a Windows computer over to a network attached storage device and maintain all of our metadata. So playlists, libraries, basically what we're going to be doing is shuffling over all of the work we did organizing ourselves on a PC to something that consumes less power like one of these NAS boxes. Uh, this one on the desk here today is from Synology. This is the DS218 Plus. It makes a great uh, low profile Plex server. And we're going to look at that process here in just a second. Now there are some prerequisites to this video. Uh, the first one is the one I did last month about backup because a lot of the things that we learned in that video will apply here. Also, I would suggest you check out my videos as to how to set up a Plex server on a NAS because that will be something I assume you already know how to do in this video. Here we're going to be focused strictly on moving the libraries over and maintaining metadata. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, nobody is reviewing or approving this before it gets uploaded and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. And I should also add that the Synology NAS here in the video was provided by Synology a while back free of charge. Now note, as we're working our way through this video, that the procedures we're following will be the same no matter what you're using. It's the locations of the metadata that are going to vary based on the two platforms you're trying to move between. Uh, so go back to my video from last month to get the context of locations of metadata. That should give you a good idea as to where to look for it and where to copy things to but we're using this analogy today just because it's the easiest way to demo this. And again, you'll just have to uh, look at your individual devices for exactly where that data is stored. All right, so let's get into this now and start moving our data over from Windows to a NAS box. All right, so we're gonna kick things off on Windows. And this is the exact same database that we were backing up last month in our backup video. And I wanted to show you a couple of things just so that you can note in your head uh, things that are unique to this set of metadata that we'll hopefully copy over to the NAS device when we're done. Uh, the first thing I did here was I changed the thumbnail of the Star Wars movie to something other than the default. I'm also going to go in here and edit the summary and just make a note here to say that this is the best movie ever and then hit save just so that you can see these things moving over uh, to the other libraries. So we got the three Star Wars movies in here. Uh, these are uh, Blu-ray MKVs residing currently on an external hard drive. I also have some music in here as well. And we have playlists set up too. So I have a couple of smart playlists based on the top rated songs and some of my favorites here. Uh, so these are all things that we want to preserve because we spent all of this time building up this metadata and you don't wanna have to go through all of that again. Uh, so now that we've got kind of the lay of the land here, what I'm going to do now is go over to my taskbar here and just close out the Plex Media server because we don't want the server writing any data to the metadata database while we're in the process of this move. So I'm just going to shut that server down by closing it out. And now we're going to go over to the NAS and do a couple of settings there just to get it ready, and then we can move the data over. All right, so we've got the DS218 Plus here set up and on my network and attached to my Plex account. As you can see right now, we are completely empty because we haven't set up any libraries yet. Uh, what's cool about this process is that once we're done copying all of our metadata and media over, those libraries will populate. So we don't have to manually recreate everything all over again. But there are a couple of things that you need to do first here on the new server. The first is to make sure that scan your library automatically and periodically, at least for the moment, are off. And you also want to uncheck empty trash automatically after every scan. Uh, this is because when we do move everything over, we are going to have to point the libraries at a new location for media. And we don't want to have anything that might take things out of your library in that process. And once you're done with the move, you can enable those things again. But for now, make sure the automatic scanning is off and the empty trash is off as well. Uh, what I did before we started was copy my media over from the external hard drive to the NAS. So it's now living here on the network attached storage device. And if we go over to my Windows side here, I will show you that 
I have put the media in its own share called Media Server. I just did this because it's easier to organize. So I've got those three Star Wars movies in here, and then I've got the music that I copied over in a music folder. And this could be anything that you want. I just mirrored what I had on that external drive. But what we did, though, was copy everything from that external drive media-wise to the drive here so it's ready for us when we get everything connected. All right, so now we've got the media copied over to the NAS. We've got the server running on the NAS, and now we're ready to copy the media over. But before we do that, we have to shut down the server on the NAS itself. And this is going to vary based on what you're using for a network attached storage device. On the Synology devices here, one of the easiest ways to shut a thing down is to go into the package center over here, uh, select Plex, and just pull down this little arrow here and go to Stop. And what this will do is shut it down uh, so that we can then uh, copy the data over without having any problems. So what you want to do is wait for it to be completely stopped. And once it is stopped, we can now begin the process of data migration. Let's get to that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is delete some files on the NAS device. I'm right now in the Synology web interface, and this is one way to make sure that you're deleting files in the right place, because the files we're copying over have the same names. Now, one of the things that I really like about the Synology Plex server is that it creates a separate file share just for the Plex metadata. And this will be the same on any Synology device here. So if we go over to Plex on our Synology server and go over to Library, go into Application Support, go to Plex Media Center, we're going to see a bunch of folders here. And what we're going to do right now is just delete a few of these. We're going to delete Media, Metadata, plugin support, and plugins, but keep everything else, including this preferences.xml file. Uh, so I'm just going to right click here and go to delete and delete those folders right out of there. Now we need to make sure that we can access that Plex directory from another computer on the network. So what we're going to do now is go over to the control panel. And again, this is specific to Synology, so you may or may not need to do this on the platform that you're trying to work with. Uh, we're going to go over to the Plex file share here, and what I'm going to do is just click on Edit and go over to Permissions and make sure that my admin account here has read and write access. You don't want to do anything to the Plex thing here, just the admin account. And now that I know that I can get access to this folder, we're going to go over to the Windows computer now and finally move that metadata over. All right, so we're back on the Windows desktop now and I'm connected to my Synology NAS. And what I'm going to do here is just go over to that Plex directory on Windows. We're going to go over to Library, Application Support, Plex Media Server, and now we're back in that directory that we were just working on. The next step here is to paste in uh, a directory that I will put in the video description for where Windows stores your local Plex metadata. This is what it looks like here. Local app data with two percentage signs before the beginning and end uh, backslash Plex media server. And I'll hit enter there. And what you're going to see here is something that looks very similar to what we just did on the NAS side. And what I'm going to do is just grab those folders that we deleted from the NAS that are still on our Windows server and just drag them over. Now, depending on the size of your individual metadata, this process will either be quick like it is now or it might take some time. Uh, so just let it copy. And once it's done, we can then reactivate the Plex server on the NAS, and we should see all of those libraries waiting for us that were on the Windows server before. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're going to now spin up the Plex Media Server. Again, on Synology, the package center is the easiest way to start and stop stuff. So right now, we're going to click on Run uh, to get it back up and running here. And just give that a second for it to do its thing. And once we see that it's running, we can jump over to the web control panel. What you can do is click open here or go to plex.tv and launch it from there. I already have this tab loaded up here, so I think we're ready to go. And check it out. All of that stuff that we copied over from the Windows server is now here. Pretty cool, right? But we've got a few things that we have to do first, because if I try to play back this movie right now, uh, I did retain where I last left off. It can't find the files because the way Windows does files is different than the way Linux does 
on these NAS devices. So what we're going to have to do is go library by library to repoint the uh, libraries at the area in which we stored the uh, movie files. So what I'm going to do here is go to Manage Library and click on Edit. And what we'll do is go to Add Folders. And you can see here it still has eMovies, but of course these NAS devices don't use letter uh, identifiers for the drive. So what I'm going to do is just click on Browse for a new folder. And if you ever set up a NAS before with Plex, this is the very same process. Uh, so I'm going to navigate to the media server and then to my Movies folder here and add that. And you can see now that we've got the proper location. And all I'm going to do now is just remove uh, the old library and click Save Changes. And you'll see things just kind of update here, but it just basically kept everything in place. And you can also see that uh, the movie is right where we left it. Now let's check the metadata and see if it copied over the note. Yep, there's the note that we left on the uh, Windows server. It copied over to the NAS here without any problems. Uh, so we'll just cancel that out. Uh, we do need to point the music directory also, so we'll go over to it, click on Edit, go to Add Folders. We'll do the browse here once more and just navigate over to where that music folder is and click Add and Save Changes. Actually, uh, remove the eMusic and then click Save Changes. And there you go. We are back up and running. Let's take a look and see if the playlists are still there. Yep, the same playlist we had before. Uh, and I should be able to start playing something. And I think what I'll do real quick is just uh, jump out to my phone so we don't get a copyright issue here. And let's see if that movie will start playing. All right, so I've got my phone now connected to the server here. No problems there. Uh, you can see everything looks like it did on the web version. We'll go over to the Star Wars movie. It retained my place where I was before. I'm just going to hit play here to start playing back the film. And there you go. You can see the movie now is successfully playing back on our device here without any problems whatsoever. Good stuff. And we have really very easily migrated this data over from a Windows computer to a NAS in a way that kind of surprised me that it was as easy as this was. Uh, the only caveat was that we had to set up a new server. Uh, there might be some ways to edit XML files and everything to keep everything identical. But for me, the retention of the metadata and the libraries was the most important thing to me. And I don't mind having a new server name to connect to. So I am perfectly happy with what I just put together here. Uh, one thing you'll want to do, though, is go back into the library settings that we were working on before we started the process and enable your scan library preferences as well as the empty trash thing as well. Uh, these are things that will vary based on your own particular needs. For me, I like to scan the library automatically so that when I copy something to my NAS, it shows up for me when I sit down in front of the TV. Uh, but of course, your preferences will be your own. You also want to do some other stuff like make sure that hardware transcoding is enabled and all the other things that we often talk about when setting up a NAS device like this. Now, if you don't want your old Windows server to show up in your apps rolling forward, you can find the Authorized Devices section in Settings and just click the X here to remove it, and that will take it out of all of your phones and tablets and TVs rolling forward here. Uh, one thing to note is that if you can't find this screen, uh, you likely logged into the local IP of your Plex server, and you should go to plex.tv and then launch the web interface from there, and that should get you into this screen uh, to remove whatever you don't want on there. And that's it. You have successfully, hopefully, uh, migrated over your data to the new device here a lot faster than having to rebuild everything from scratch, and all of the stuff that you did to organize your media will carry over with it. Really surprising how easy this was. It almost feels too easy. Maybe I'm missing something, so let me know down in the comments section. Some of you may actually have better ideas, too, uh, that will help inform future videos. So I really welcome your feedback, and that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.